you're working diligently on your college applications, it can be difficult to wait until admissions decisions are made and you can start planning your future. Receiving notification of the admissions staff's decision requires you to be patient and have confidence in yourself no matter what the message says. Hi, I'm Margaret Meek, and this is the College Admissions Notification Process. One quick reminder, the school will send the notification when they are ready. Some acceptances come early, others come later. More selected schools may not tell you anything before the end of March. Bugging your admissions officer will not speed up the process or make your acceptance any more imminent. It will make the counselor frustrated with you, which is not a place where you want to be. These days, colleges can notify you of your admission status in several different ways. There is the storied large envelope full of promotional materials for an acceptance with a skinny letter for a denial. You may receive an email. Make sure you keep an eye on your email filters as the notification may come from a new email address. Another manner is text message. Generally, there will be a follow-up with either an email or text in a more formal paper way. Or there may be a posting in your application portal. This generally involves just a quick notification on your status followed by a formal paper follow-up. While it may seem that all your work is done when you hit the submit button on your applications, the receipt of the admissions decision is the start of the next round of work as you move on toward being a student. But before we get to the work, let's talk about the admissions possibilities the school can choose. The best notification you can get is congratulations, you are now a student at our illustrious institution. Yay for you. Celebrate the possibilities and then prepare to do the work necessary to make your transition to college as successful as possible. Because colleges know that you may receive more than one acceptance, they are likely to make their admissions packet special. They know they are still working to recruit you to attend their school. They need you to choose them over every other school that offers you an admission. Read your letter carefully. You may be accepted into the school without being accepted into the major you listed on your application. You may be assigned to a general studies program that will require you to do some work before you can transfer into your preferred major. If that happens, start to do your homework on the work that that transfer will take. The second best notification that you can receive is that you are waitlisted. This is not a rejection, but it does mean you will need to be patient as the school works through their acceptances and can offer you admissions. Watch our video on what to do when waitlisted and you will be ready to move forward. The least desirable notification is that you are denied admission. As with many things in life, that is not easy to hear. It is, however, a bump in the road. After you mourn the loss of what could have been, get busy looking for what will be. With over 5,000 institutions of higher education in the U.S., there is a great school for you, if not a few hundred schools. Keep working to create your destiny. Wait to hear from other schools to which you have applied and look for schools that offer rolling admissions and will be available should the school match your needs. You can find out more about rolling admissions here. And this is when you go back to work. No matter what type of notification you receive, make sure you read the notification in full. There may be steps you need to take to accept, decline, or that may impact your placement on the wait list. So as with all notifications you receive from colleges, read everything. If your application efforts are rewarded with an acceptance, the school will send you information on orientation programs, residence hall reservations, course registration process, and much, much more. They may offer special campus attendance events or participation in information opportunities. Take advantage of these offerings if at all possible. Also, pay special attention to any deadlines listed. While most colleges use May 1st as their deadline for you to pay your deposit and reserve your space in the next freshman class, it is up to the school to name their deadline. Know the last day you can accept and pay your deposit. As you start looking at the information provided, you may find that colleges will set up incentives for you to accept your admission before the final deadline. For example, they may establish the first day to reserve a residence hall space in April. 
They will require your deposit to be paid before you can secure housing. So know those dates. Be aware of the decisions you need to make as you select the school you will attend. You will also receive a financial aid statement. If you filed your FAFSA, you will receive a formal notification of Pell Grant eligibility and federal loan availability this college has awarded. They will generally list all of the funding you have secured from the college as well. This document will help you compare and contrast all acceptances you receive. We suggest you work with a college cost calculator to help you determine how attendance at each college will impact your wallet. By the way, if you haven't filed your FAFSA, do so immediately after you finish this video. You can learn more from this video. As you receive more acceptances, you will need to start to decide which college will be lucky enough to have you as a student. It may take weeks for you to receive every admissions decision. Once you have heard from every school, you need to determine which school you will attend. Dig out your research on the schools you did while working on your application process. Visit a campus or two again, whether in person or online, to see if you still feel an attraction to that school. Have a discussion with your family about the personal and financial impact of each school. Make a decision. Decline the invitations to schools you don't wish to attend and formally accept the admissions to the school that is your top choice. If you're able to prioritize the schools as they are received, you can begin to notify schools if you are going to decline their invitation. Again, keep an eye on the calendar of deadlines you created. Make sure you accept and pay your deposit or decline each school prior to their stated cutoff. Colleges will tell you how they prefer to be notified you are declining admissions. Some may be through a specific form, while others request an email or letter to a specific location stating your decision to turn down their admission invitation. Your letter does not need to be long or detailed. Clearly state that you have decided that you will not be attending that school. Sign and date the letter. If there has been a staff member who has been especially helpful to you during this process, this is a great place to give them a shout out. Complete this process of declining admissions at your earliest convenience. Your decision may open space in a freshman class and move someone off the waiting list. The sooner you can comfortably do this, the sooner that student is notified of their admission. Even after you have received and accepted admissions to any college, you need to work to continue to keep your academic record strong and to remain a positive influence on social media and in your community. College admissions have been withdrawn because students fail their last semester in school or are involved in questionable behavior that could reflect poorly on the college. Continue the good work you have done to earn acceptance and you'll be fine. Accept admissions to the college that is best for you, pay your deposit, close out your high school career on a positive note, and you are well on your way to college. If you found any of this information useful, please hit the like button or perhaps consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below.